the belly. And I'm going to put right over here, don't call me stomach. Belly. Don't call me stomach. It's not a stomach, it's a belly. Now, a more professional term for belly would be abdomen. Abdomen, yeah. So abdomen or abdominal means belly. There is another medical term for belly. Medical term is lapero. Very, very important. Because you'll be doing a lot of work for lapara. Scopic surgery. You'll be doing a lot of work for that. A lot. And I mean a lot. Now, laparoscopic surgery, whether you know about the word scopic, okay, you know that lapro is belly. So you know that it's some kind of surgery on the belly, okay? We're skipping the word scopic, okay? So it's your first day on the job. They put you in the uh, case cart assembly area, okay? And they say, okay, get me a kit for laparoscopic surgery. Well, don't go to orthopedics. Find the place where they store stuff to work on belly and you'll find a kit for laparoscopic surgery, okay? Because you know that lapro means belly, belly. Now, because we're talking about belly, by the way, scopic is, uh, is a combination of two words. One is a scope, okay? And the last is suffix ik. And I'm gonna give you something about ik. Ik is a suffix. Ik comes a as a group of suffixes, okay? And they are ik, ak, um, Al, us, and are. You will see a lot of these suffixes in medicine. Lucky for us, these suffixes all mean the same thing. All of these suffixes mean the same thing. They mean belonging or pertaining to. The question is, what is the word scope? You have seen words like telescope and microscope. You've seen these words, haven't you? What do you use a telescope for? What to see? To see what? The telescope. Uh, yeah. What? Yeah. So what, when you when you say a telescope, what are we looking at? Space stars. Space stars, <laughs> right? Space. By the way, something. Look for something out in space. We're looking at the moon with a telescope. We're looking at the stars, right? So why did they call it a yeah. telescope? Why why couldn't they call it a star scope or a moon scope? Okay. Why do they call it telescope? Well, the, here's a question. Why did they call telephone a telephone? And why did they call television television? 
do you see that there's a word telly, telly, and telly over here? So the word telly means far. So telescope means far scope. Now the word scope means to see. So what is the meaning of the word telescope? To see far. To see far. Microscope. Sorry, put a dash in the wrong place. Microscope. Micro means tiny. So what is what is the meaning of the word microscope? To see tiny. To see tiny. The question, what is phone? Phone means sound. Telephone literally means sound from far away. And I don't even have to tell you what vision means. To see, to see something, to see from far away. I can be a thousand miles away, there could be a camera, and I can have a wire or a satellite beam images down to my television for I can see a vision from far away. Do you see? I mean, who the hell? I mean, we take for granted the words like telephone. Who came up with it? Well, that's how people come up. Scientists, medical people, they have very creative minds and they like Greek and Latin languages. So they use them. They use them. And that's that's how these names came up. Okay? Now, so what is laparoscopic? Well, it literally means belonging to seeing the belly. That's a laparoscopic procedure. Okay? So whatever the case may be, we're using some kind of a device, whether it's a telescope, microscope, whatever the case may be, and we're going to talk about these things because we're going to see a device called an endoscope. It's hanging right here on my wall. You've, we've seen it around. This is, these are endoscopes hanging here on my wall. Okay? So whatever it is. But you know what? What if I were to change the suffix from ik to y? What would that make this? Come on. I got rid of ik and I replaced it with a y. What do I have now? What was the change that I made? Instead of a procedure. Thank you. I took it, you know, instead of laparoscopic, which kind of was like a vague term, right? And I said, instead of that, I, I called it a laparoscopy. Wow. Now I'm talking about a procedure. I, am I making, am I beginning to kind of make sense a little bit to you? Yeah, Am I right yes, sir. Yes, it is. Folks, don't be afraid of big words. The bigger the word, the more small components make it up. That's the beautiful part about uh, about uh, you know uh, you know this is not like the song "Super Califragilistic Expialidocious," right? Remember that song from what was it, the Mary Poppins? Okay. Supercalifragilistic expialidocious. That's not a real word, or maybe it is, I don't know. But endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography is. Okay? And so when you see endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, I can break it down into a whole bunch of different word parts. And then all of a sudden, something in there is going to make sense. Something is going to make sense. So don't be afraid. The bigger, the uglier the word, okay? Like otorhinolaryngologist. Remember I told you that last time, otorhinolaryngologist. Now yeah. we know that auto is ear, rhino is nose, laringo Laringo. is throat. throat. So otorhinolaryngologist literally means ear, nose, and throat. Something is going to something is going to click and it's going to make sense. And you're going to be able to see it on the exam or whatever. Um, and uh, you'll get it right. Okay, you will get it right. And don't don't worry about it. Don't sweat it. So Steve, I have a question. 
should. Uh, so hold on. You say that those IC, AC, UM, AS, mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. all those we also need to know, right? Yeah, these are these are very important suffixes. Okay, but okay. Ag again, Rebecca, don't concentrate on them today. You will pass okay. the test. You'll go back to it. Okay. okay. I was about don't to ask you. How no, no. Yeah. I was about to ask you, how do you can ha can put so much information in your big cabeza? <laughs> <laughs> it's not that much. And again, I, I am going to tell you once again, the main principles of learning are made up of three parts. Initial exposure to the information, what's happening right now, I'm giving it to you. I exposed you to this information. And say so today said, wow, man, this is great stuff, Steve. I love this stuff. This is awesome. I want to learn more of it. Great. But if you go home, well, in most of cases, you're already home. But if you, when the class is over, this information is gone. Rapido. That's true. Okay. Unless an hour from now, you're going to turn that video on and you're going to expose yourself to it again. And then again, and then again. And then that's stage two. First is the initial exposure. Number two, review. And number three, putting it to work. Meaning you start using it. You know, at the end of the class, you say, you go back to your husband, you go back to your wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. And you say, hey. Do you know the meaning of the word telephone? Do you know the meaning of the word, uh, I don't know, uh, whatever, something, whatever we have over here, laparoscopy, and you start using it and you start teaching this to others. That's why last class I told you, <clears throat> if you know just one thing, teach it to somebody else. After you do that, you will never, ever, forget it. It becomes incorporated into every cell of your body. You know, nerves and neuroscientists today say that it's not just your brain that remembers stuff. It's your body tissues too. Your body takes part, your entire nervous system, even the cells in your body have a memory. When you make something your own, it becomes a part of you, literally. So you're learning it right now, you're exposed to it right now, but you don't have ownership of it. Once you start reviewing it a couple of times, and then once you start giving it to somebody else, that's when it truly becomes your own, okay? But that requires repetition, and that requires you to use it, and that requires you to draw these pictures that I'm drawing over here, because your, see, children, small children are like wet sponges. You can show them and tell them anything and everything, and they're going to remember. After age eight, we're no longer children, and we don't remember everything you tell us. Now we have to rely on what we learned before, and then we have to take the new information and try to fit it in to what we learned in the very young age. Okay? That's how learning works. So we only truly learn up to age of eight. After that, it's a little different style of learning. So you have to review, you have to write. And that, you know, <clears throat> what happens in kindergarten, right? In kindergarten, they've given them a huge amount of information. But how do they do it? They sing songs, they do plays, okay? Little kids dancing around and stuff like that and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But then when they go to first grade, the learning style changes. You begin to learn how to write. Little kids begin to learn with, uh, with, with drawing with paint, okay? And that's how they, be, they learn everything that way. After that, you have to start writing. And it's not because they want you to learn how to write. It's because many, many centuries ago, they already figured out that without writing after a certain age, you're just not learning. It's true. 
So you start learning at age seven, eight, you begin to learn to write, and then you write more and more and more and more. As adults, that's the only way to do it. And that's why I insist on doing this rather than showing you PowerPoints, because PowerPoints are, excuse me, bullshit. Okay? They have their place, and I put some PowerPoint presentations for you too, okay? But that's just extra. Most of the stuff, the way you're going to learn is if you're going to do this over and over again, and then you're going to teach it to somebody else. That's when it's going to become your own. Rebecca, the more time you spend writing and reviewing, that's mm -hmm. how you're going to remember everything. That's, you know, I, I'm not some kind of a, a genius here. I'm not. Believe me. But the fact of the, of the matter is I used to think that I was a genius because my, my mother told me. Then I got married, and my my wife told me that I was an idiot. So somewhere I'm I'm somewhere in in between. Okay. Why told you I I think I think every woman tells her husband that uh, that he's an idiot at some point. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Why do women so, say that? Okay. Yeah, why? <laughs> my wife says this. this is, you idiot. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, my, I have an uncle. My uncle has a PhD. He has two PhDs. He is a very bright guy. His wife didn't graduate from college and, and barely made it through high school. But in her book, he is an idiot. And I remember I came home, I came to their house, and she called him an idiot one more time. And he turns to me and says, you know, what is she talking about? He says, I, I have two PhDs. Why, you know, why am I an idiot? I, I, I have a secret. I, I know what the secret is. Uh, in every household, there is a magic door handle. As soon as a man comes home, touches the door handle, he is immediately an idiot. It's a magic door handle. Uh, okay, so it's it's supposed to be a joke, okay? But the fact of the matter is, because men and women have a different style of learning and communicating, because women communicate an ungodly amount of times better than men do, women communicate. Women learn early in life to absorb information and to give that information out completely while paying attention to detail. Men, men, uh, ooh, uh, and when we can't get that across, we punch somebody in the face, okay? Women don't they necessarily punch people in the face, but they say terrible things, mean things, because the other women interpret it like it's a punch in the face, okay? So you don't have to punch somebody in the face. You can express it to them, and that feels like a punch in the face. But women have control of that, and men do not. And because women communicate much better than men, men are idiots. Capish? That's it. Thank you. Yes, that's I it. Understand. If you say dichlorodifluorometano or hydrochlorothiazida. Okay, and, and now for, for me, uh, you know, so I can understand it. Uh, that says uh, when I was studying pharmacy in the eye, I'm telling you, it, this is not the terminology for the pharmacy. Oh my goodness. This it's a little bit, it's different. It's a little different. You, you very, learn different very, things very from pharmacology. Mm -hmm. If you say, oh, can you bring me acid acetyl salicylic plus my. Aspirin, dependent? aspirin. I know that. Okay. For the vitamina <laughs> plus uh, cipro, uh, ciprofosacina, my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. When they say what? Uh, That's right. That's right. The uh, event is more easy because in DR, the medicine, they use the the, the uh, terminology of uh, the commerce. For example, aspirina. Yeah. Everybody, they know the aspirina, but in here, it's different because they use the, the generic. Yeah. You know, you want to say it's very, very, when you say to somebody, can you bring me the acid, the acid, the acid, the acid, what, what are you saying me? You know, the aspirin, aspirin, aspirin. Or yes. you can, or you can say me, for example, um, the chloro, the chloro, the you know, what is an anti, antibiotic, you know, what? Yes, 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 you're absolutely yeah. right. You know, back back when I when I started in, in healthcare, we used to get orders from doctors, and they were written in the same day. So, for example, if the doctor wanted to say this, acetosalicylicus tres diumperorum, 
That's how you would get the uh, the requirement from the doctor. And all that means is acetosalicylicus, which meant aspirin, tres dium, three times a day, per orum by mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so that that's how orders used to be written in medicine. They don't do that anymore because nobody understands this. But I hear what you're saying. All right, let's look at the belly. For the information, they look great, Steve. It looks good? Yeah, yeah, very clear. Very good. And so, inside the belly, we have something called the digestive system. Digestive system. Now, we're, we're not going to finish everything today, okay? We're going to continue with this on Friday. So, you know, we're going to stop at some point in time because too much information is too much information. Digestive system is a system that breaks down food and eliminates waste. And what does that mean in plain English? Breaks down food and eliminates waste. Please don't be upset with me. A system that breaks down food and eliminates waste is you eat and you poop. Mm -hmm. That's what it means in English, eat and poop. And so the digestive system begins with the mouth. This is a side view of the mouth, and that's the teeth, and that's the tongue. So that's the mouth, teeth, and tongue. From the mouth, we have a food pipe. From the mouth, we have a food pipe. You all know what it is. You put the food in your mouth and you chew it. No, no, no. Then you swallow it and it goes down the food pipe. If you're trying to talk while you're eating, a lot of times the food is going to go into a different pipe, into your air pipe, and you begin to cough. <coughs> That's why grandma always told you, hey, don't talk with your mouth full. Make sense? Yes. Yes, it does. Excellent. Excellent. So we're talking about the food pipe. Now, the food pipe is called esophagus. 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 Okay, now it's an interesting word. Esophagus. Look at that. That's our suffix us on the end, right? Us. And esophagus actually can be broken down into so, which is a prefix, which means into, phago, and suffix us. Fago means to eat or swallow. Uh, keep forgetting swallow with an A or with an O. One is a bird, one is to swallow. I think it's with an O. No, yeah. yeah it's with O. Yeah. So, eat or swallow. And suffix US, if uh, there was a bunch of suffixes I gave you, ik, ak, um, al, us, and ar means belonging to or pertaining to. So esophagus literally means to eat and swallow into. And the question is, into what? And there's a little organ right over here. It's actually a big organ, okay? Looks like this. And this organ over here, now that organ right there, that's what we call the stomach. That's the stomach. It's on the left side of your belly on top. That's the stomach. And the medical term for stomach is gastro. 
Gastro. <coughs> Gastro. So esophagus means food pipe, but it's called esophagus because it's to eat or swallow into. Into what? Into the stomach. Now, the stomach will connect to about 23 feet of pipe right over here, which is twisted and convoluted. And this pipe right over here is called the small intestine. And the medical term for small intestine, there are two. One is ileo and one is entero. Now, look at this word right over here. Here it is. Here's a word. Try to say it. Try to say this word. Gastroenterology. Excellent. Excellent. Gastroenterology. 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 Even if you don't know what the suffix ology is, Okay, and ology means study of. It's a study of the stomach and the small intestine. Hello, it's a specialty in medicine. And the doctor would be called a gastroenterologist. You see? Now, over here, this small intestine connects to a thicker pipe that goes up, across, down, makes a little turn like this, and then out. This place right over here is called the large intestine, but also we call it colon or colo, and there's one more word that looks like this. C-A-E-C-O. C-A-E-C-O. No, it's not pronounced as Keiko. It is actually pronounced as Seiko. The pron pronunciation for this is Seiko. That's how it's pronounced. Seiko. And all these words right over here mean large intestine. Now, I want to draw your attention over here to this little spot that I left over here. This spot in the bottom left side, in the bottom left side of the belly, that's the appendix. They don't know what it is, but they sure do a lot of these procedures over here. Here's the procedure name. Appendectomy. 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 What does it mean, an appendectomy? Can anyone translate this word to me? Por favor. That's it, the uh, appendicity, right? Appendicity. Well, well, hold on a second. If I wanted to say appendicitis, I would have said, I would have wrote it like this, appendicitis. And what's appendicitis? Appendicitis is the inflammation of the appendix. Well, what about the appendectomy? Is the removal? The, yeah, thank you. It is the removal of the appendix. Or That's right. Excision, right? Well, you can say excision if you want to, but we are trying to keep it simple. Remember what I told you? Ectomy was suffix Y is a procedure. Thomas to cut X is out. So it's to cut out the appendix. 
You, uh, Rebecca, used the word excision. <clears throat> Here it is. Look at the word excision. Can you recognize something in the word excision? <clears throat> what can you recognize in the word excision? X. Thank you. So excision, you recognize X. Now, this word right over here is actually a part of the word that you also know. What do scissors do? This is scissors. Cut. Cut. So, Cut. so what is excision? Out. Cut. Cut out. Thank you. Cut. Thank you. That's it. This is language, my dear friends. This is this is how we learn the language. Now, so this right over here is the large intestine. Large intestine. Large intestine. It goes up, across, and down. Large intestine is called the colon. And, or sometimes, or sometimes it's referred to as seco. Okay, now, before I go on, I want to tell you that there's a couple of parts of the colon that you need to know the names for. Now, I'm going to shade this area like this. Because this part of the large intestine has a separate name, and it's called the sigmoid colon. Sigmoid colon. Now, what the heck is the sigmoid colon? Mm -hmm. Well, the word sigmoid is an interesting word. It's a part of the large intestine. But I separate it out for you. And by the way, it doesn't include this part. We're going to talk about this part momentarily, too. So I'm going to erase this. Okay, and I'm going to write the word sigmoid. Sigmoid. And I'm going to separate it out into the following words. Sigma or sigma and suffix O-I-D. Sigma is a Greek letter, looks like this. You've seen this letter. I know you have. So sigma is also another way of saying S. If you look at this right over here, it looks like a letter S, right? Mm -hmm. Suffix O-I-D means looks like suffix o i d means looks like do you know any words that end with o i d I'll show you. Yeah. Steroid. Okay, very good. What is this? It's not an apple. It's a what? Andrew. Android. It's Android. Okay. Why the hell did they call it Android? Ah, what kind of a what kind of a person calls something Android? Do you know the symbol for Android? What is the logo for Android? Does anybody know? It's a little green guy. It kind of looks like this. Right? Oh. So, andro and suffix oid. Andro is the same as the name Andrew. Does anybody know what the word Andrew means 
it actually comes, Andrew comes from an interesting word that you may have seen. Adam and Andrew, and even this name right over here, Ashton, in different languages, it means the same thing. Adam is a Hebrew name for man. Andrew and Ashton mean the same thing. The suffix O-I-D, suffix O-I-D means looks like. So the word android literally means looks like a man. Hmm? How about them apples? Hmm. Why, why they call it android or why they call it, why they call the other thing apple, I don't know. But uh, you know what? I'm going to show you a picture and you can make up your own mind. Hold on a second. Let me find a picture quickly and I'll show it to you. It's, it's a little fun. You know, you find all sorts of crazy things uh, out on the, uh, out in, in the, you know, what people do, what people say. Uh, and then you can, you know, sort of, uh, kind of, I'm going to show you something, uh, a picture. You've seen it a million times, but maybe not. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen with you. And you're going to see a picture. Do you see this picture right over here? Yeah. Do you know what this is? The inside of an apple. Is the apple? No, it's not just it. Well, that's right. It is the inside of an apple. Okay. Now, this is a precursor. Huh? Hot. Heart? Somebody hot. Oh, no, 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 no. This is definitely an apple, and it's definitely not anybody's heart. Well, this is the logo that the uh, that the Beatles came up with, uh, the band, one of the most famous bands ever. This is the logo. Now, I want to draw your attention to something very, very interesting here, if you can see this. If you look over here, this looks like a woman's butt. And if you look even closer, the apple core right over here looks like a woman's something else. Now, do you see what I'm talking about? This is not my imagination. This is actually what it is. Yes, it is. You got, I got it. Okay. So the company Apple that made their telephones, Steve Jobs loved this so much that he called his company Apple. And the logo over there is also an Apple. So if Apple looks like a woman's private parts right over here, if you see it, it even has a little whatever. It's got yeah. everything. I mean, this is this is perfect. I mean, if, if you look at it, it's it's better than anything else, you know. But uh, whatever the case is, whatever I just showed you is a complete and total truth. <laughs> I, I, this, is, this is this is this is this is my dear friends. This is real world stuff, and I would imagine that in somebody's mind, if that other company borrowed itself this thing from the woman's private parts and now Apple is the female, this Android telephone is the man. The man. So... The, the uh, female and ma masculine, right? <laughs> yes, that's right. So whatever the case may be, now, now I, you know, once, I, once somebody showed this uh, to me and explained it to me, I never looked at the Beatles the same way, okay? Me too. Uh, so this is... Uh, this is one of those interesting things that happens. Now, last, I'm gonna, this is the last part of today's uh, conversation of today's class is this. And by the way, just the use of suffix oid. Um, uh, human and humanoid. Something can be human or something that looks like human, but it's not. So, deltoid. It's actually something that looks like the Greek letter delta. Okay, that's why they call it deltoid. You know, the muscle right over here is a deltoid muscle. 
okay? And that thing is called deltoid because it looks like a Greek letter delta. So every time you see oid on the end of the word, it means looks like something. Okay? Right. That's very interesting. See, the, I never saw this, the apple. Uh-huh. Well, hopefully it's not the only thing you're going to remember from today's class. <laughs> right. You know, so that's... Uh, um, that's it. That's that's uh, that's that's what I want you to know. Now the last piece right over here is um, is the last part of the um, digestive tract where the poop actually comes out right over here, and that's called a rectum. Here is our friend, and it's not just rectum. It's also the anus. Now, our friend, rectum, is made up of two word parts. Suffix U-M. Remember those suffixes I gave you. Ik, ak, um, al, us, ar. And recto. Recto. Recto is an interesting word. It's an interesting word. Recto is interesting because it's the same word as right. Rect and right. As a matter of fact, in German, the word for right is not right. It's recht or rect. You may have also seen the word like erect. Now, I know, I know, I know. Every time you, you see the word erect, people think about penises, blah, 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 blah. And it's true. But right doesn't necessarily mean your right hand. It also means straight. Because if you look at the word straight, you can see the word right in it with just minor changes. That's the evolution of languages. So rectum means something that's straight, and that's the only real straight piece of your colon. That's why they call it the rectum. Now, rectum and anus, they come together. <clears throat> anus is that circle <coughs> on the end of the rectum. That circle opens and closes, opens and closes. When you want to go poop, it opens up and the poop comes out. When it's time to stop, you close it, okay? The word anus, I'm going to show you something very interesting. Uh, by the way, the medical term for rectum and anus is procto. When somebody says procto, they're talking about rectum and anus together. Now, yeah, I lost my train of thought <coughs> and I already forgot what I, oh, no, no, I, now I remember. I was going to talk about the word anus. Okay, and you know, here's a picture of something. What is this a picture of? Don't tell me it's an upside down balloon. What does it look like? Come on. Hey. Hey, cool. No. How about now? What does it look like now? Oh, the fork. Okay. A what? The fork, but I don't know if it's in English. So what, what, what happens here? Light? Light? No, no. No, no. no. Like, definitely, definitely not life. This is more like death. So if you put somebody's head in here, yeah, and it's a person, mm -hmm. they, they... 
This thing right over here is called a noose. A noose. Did I spell it correctly? N U C E. Lately, I, I've been forgetting how to spell basic words. It's okay. It happens. Uh, let me see. Let me just check myself. Yeah, okay, it's, it's right. A noose. A noose. What did I tell you the anus does? It opens and closes. That's what the noose does. It tightens around the neck, okay? So anus is literally a noose used to hang somebody, okay? So, all right. I'm going to stop right here, but I want to ask you some questions. Okay? I would like to ask you some questions. I'm going to write them down on the board. You can write them down for yourself, and then you can text me the answers. Please don't sing out the answers right now. Okay? Just okay. text them to me. That's the question number one. Write it down. Please don't give me the answers. I want, just text them to me. And text them to me directly. Don't put it in the group chat, okay? What's that word that I didn't get it? Aleke? Aleka? Spell it. A I L E O C A E C A L. Okay, thank you. Okay. What? So here are these two questions, and I would like to you, and if you Google your answer, I will know. I only want you to find the answer based on the information solely from the class today. Okay? So these two questions, find me the answers, and in your own words, text me the answers. <clears throat> 